What I'd like to do is sort of walk you through our journey in the exploration of the Titanic, sort of past, present, and some thoughts about the future. Now, my journey to the Titanic came in a very different way. I, first place, I was born in Wichita, Kansas, where all oceanographers come from, so. Uh, but shortly after being born in Wichita, our house was blown by a tornado, not to, to uh, Oz, but to uh, San Diego. My father was a test flight engineer during the war, and I grew up in San Diego and fell in love with the ocean. My, my passion was to be Captain Nemo. That's what I wanted to be. And my parents actually worked with me on that passion. Uh, but that certainly, because of Captain Nemo, had a submarine. It was a, it was a wonderful series of coincidences that, as an Army intelligence officer uh, during Vietnam, I ended up in the United States Navy. Still don't know how that happened. And I was assigned to this deep diving submarine at Woods Hole up the street in Massachusetts. And for 30 years, uh, that was where I conducted my explorations. And going down to the bottom of the ocean, I, I, I'm, my background, as, though, as you know, or maybe you don't know, is I got my PhD. Let's see if we get this thing going here. How are we doing? There we go. My PhD I got here at the Graduate School of Oceanography at URI. So I'm a RAM, I want you to know. And, uh, and, and so being, a, being a, 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 my degree was in marine geology, I had a passion for exploring the bottom of the ocean. And to do that, the best way to do that was to climb inside this little deep diving submarine and go to the bottom of the ocean. And I did it for over uh, uh, two and a half decades. I made hundreds and hundreds of dives going down in this submarine to explore the bottom of the ocean. The frustration I had uh, in the process was to get in a submarine, the average depth of the ocean is 12,000 feet. 50% uh, of the world's oceans is deeper than 12,000 feet. But just going to the, the average depth, and that's ex exactly where the Titanic was, it sits at the average depth. So to get down to the Titanic in a deep diving submarine took you two and a half hours in the morning to get to work and two and a half hours in the afternoon to get home. So I had a five hour commute to work every day at the office. And my average bottom time was just about three hours and the average distance I traveled in that day of exploration was one nautical mile. So very frustrating because I spend more time going in the vertical than in the horizontal. And so I began to dream, and I actually published this cartoon in the 1981 issue of National Geographic magazine. And it was about a whole new way of exploring. We call it telepresence. The, to, to, instead of sending your physical body to the ocean, which is fragile and, and must be protected by a pressure housing, we wanted to literally have an out-of-body experience. And that is to send our spirit. Our spirit has no mass. It can travel at the speed of light and it's indestructible. And in fact, when I look at my body and I look at my hand, I don't think of that as me. I think of it as an amazing piece of machinery, but I think that my spirit is the important part. And so the whole idea of this technology was to literally leave my body. And in fact, the, the final example of that would be what we just saw in Jim Cameron's movie, Avatar, when the person left his physical body and went into a Navia's body. And I, I'm assuming a lot of you saw the movie Avatar because to me it's a very futuristic look at where I see the technology taking us. And if you remember, the person uh, was transported into this new body and you may remember the first thing the person did when, they, when he found himself inside a Navia's body was to get up and run out the room. And the reason he got up and ran out of the room is because in his human body his legs didn't work. But in the novice body, he had legs. He didn't care that he was nine feet tall and green. He could run. And this is really where we're talking about. So what we're doing here at, at, at URI and down at the Graduate School of Oceanography is not only pioneering exploration of the oceans, but really pioneering a fundamentally new paradigm in how humans are going to be acting. I have a, a, a young uh, boy and, and, and a young daughter who are, you know, live in the cloud. And my son's girlfriend uh, presently is in India doing an advanced course in yoga or something. And I go into his room and his laptop was up and, he, and there's his girlfriend on the laptop and, 
and, and, and she's got her laptop up. And they weren't even talking to one another. They were going about doing their own thing in their room, but then they would periodically come over and chat. And then they would go back to what they were doing. And I asked my son, you know, I said, hi, Lara, that's his girlfriend. I said, Ben, can you give me the latitude and longitude of where you are right now? He said, Dad, I'm in the cloud. It has no latitude and longitude. Now, those children look like us, but they're really not us. Okay. <laughs>